This episode of Richard's Tech Tip is brought to you by WHM Superb. Energize your cPanel servers today. With WHM Superb, you can offer services such as shoutcast radio services, icecast radio services, mumble voice conferencing, apps installer, and also Nginx reverse caching proxy. Click to get more information today. Hi everyone. Okay, so I still haven't moved in into my new area, my new spot where I want to do videos, but I decided I'd still make a video today um, to discuss a little bit about what PC you should buy. Now, particularly the reason why I'm discussing and I want to talk about which PCs you sh I suggest that you buy is because I've seen, you know, going to certain large um, stores, such as Price Smart, for example, um, that... A lot of people seem to be confused about computers. I see a lot of, you know, older age folks looking at these PCs and going through them and they're not exactly sure, you know, all the different specs and whatnot. So today I'm, I'm going to try to make a general uh, formula or general statement in how to purchase a PC. Now, the first thing you might be wondering, and this is how I normally would suggest a PC to someone, is really to decide whether they want the PC for document work or basic office work, or if they want the PC for specialized reasons, such as, you know, video rendering, um, audio, audio, uh, you know, like actually recording music and, um, or perhaps, you know, gaming. And, and, and I think those are the three major uh, specialized fields that a lot of people use it for. And you could, I mean, you could go ahead and say engineering as well. But the point is, this, so I broke it up into basically two general uh, two general groups, as I said, office and specialized. Now, generally speaking, uh, office, if you need to do office work, um, and that's normally with Microsoft Office, Excel, PowerPoint, etc., the Microsoft suite of uh, software, you don't need an extremely powerful machine. Now, I'll explain what an extremely powerful machine is. In today's world, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, I'd say that the average PC is a dual core or a quad core PC. And that means that the average PC has at least four CPU cores in one processor. And I'm getting technical, but I don't want to get too technical. So what I would say is to the average person who needs a PC for office work, you won't ever go over four cores. And even two cores are enough to do the basic things. So when purchasing a PC, for those of you who want to do it for homework, etc., office work, etc., I would suggest that you go with something uh, in between. So if you could afford a quad core machine, go with the quad core. If you can't, a dual core will suffice to do your, your word processing and your Excel processing and your PowerPoint work. All right, so that's the start, which is the processor. Let's talk a little bit about the storage space that you would require and the RAM. Okay, let's actually go with the RAM. So the RAM is random access memory. It is actually temporary memory that is used by the computer. So the question is now, how do I know what to choose? And I'll explain that to you. The average PC nowadays comes with at least two gigabytes of RAM and I'm talking in 2016. This will of course change as time goes by and as uh, products become cheaper, larger, etc. That's how the that's how it always works. All right, so two gigabytes of RAM, I would say, is the basic minimum you should have in a PC nowadays. Whether it is for office, whether it is for gaming, I don't even think you should run two gigabytes for gaming. I think you should run more. But let's stick to office. Let's stick to homework, etc. All right, so two gigabytes should be your basic. I would suggest at least four gigabytes of RAM for some room to do base at some you know additional stuff you don't want to you don't want to keep it too close because if you keep it too close then you'll have to change parts at, uh, afterwards and you know that's a hassle as well you might have to pay someone if you don't know how to open up the pc etc so let's go let's suggest as i say four gigabytes of ram i actually use about eight gigabytes of ram and i actually do video processing i do graphic work i do website work etc so four gigabytes of ram should be more than enough to do your basic work. Um, in terms of storage space, which is the where you store your documents, etc. Um, I want to call some numbers so you understand what's going on. 
Nowadays, the basic size, the minimum basic size of a hard drive you generally see brand new is about 500 gigabytes. And I would suggest that if you're doing basic work, you can use a 500 gigabyte hard drive. That's more than enough. Think of it this way. Um, in terms of a normal Word document, generally a Word document wouldn't be more than a megabyte. It depends, of course, on the size. Um, I've seen Word documents only 300 kilobytes in size, really small. So it, it varies, but I have to tell you that if it's just Word documents that you're going to be doing, you would require millions upon millions of documents for 500 gigabytes to actually be filled. Now, if you're going to do other work, for example, if you're going to want to see if you want to store your pictures, etc., your pictures will take up space. Your videos will take up space. And generally, videos are a lot larger. So let's say even if, <coughs> even if you had 100, 100 megabyte videos or 100 one gigabyte videos, you would still have you would have still only used 100 gigabytes out of your 500 gigabytes of storage space. Let's put it that way, so you get a basic idea. So, don't be confused, and at the same time, I wanna say that I've actually seen users um, going for these atoms, um, and I don't even suggest them for, for office work. Generally speaking, uh, the atoms don't perform very well. Now, the atom is sort of a mobile version of, uh, of, of, what, uh, of a normal processor. So I'm coming back to the processors and saying that if you were to buy a PC, I suggest that you don't buy Atoms if it's a laptop or a desktop. I would suggest that you go with a full, um, perhaps like an Intel i3, is, it should be good enough. That's at least a dual core. And um, in most cases, of course, I'm saying. And, uh, or an AMD uh, dual core as well. There's, you know, there's so many different series that I wouldn't be able to call out all the different models. Um, but I would suggest that you start there. For those of you who are more specialized in what you're doing, I can expect um, you to buy you know, more high-end um, high hardware. So for example, uh, a gamer would require most likely a separate GPU graphics processing unit, which is basically a video card, um, separate so that, it, so that he can run his games and whatnot. Um, and that will cost you a lot more in, in, in the long run, but that I say, that is what you need it for. So graphics rendering, you probably need a GPU as well too. Um, most graphics renderers require something like Nvidia. But anyways, the point I'm kind of, I'm going, I'm, I'm moving across now is to like gamers. In terms of the games nowadays, the games are really CPU and also graphics intensive. So I would suggest at least a quad core or up. If you could get an eight core, better yet. Um, a lot of the games long ago didn't use multi-processing, multi so it didn't use the different cores. So it doesn't benefit you for the older games, but for the new games, um, the multi-core is, is beneficial. Um, I would suggest that if you are a gamer, you start with 8 gigs of RAM for now, the, for the new games. Um, a graphics processing unit, preferably not just a cheap video card. There's some GTX cards out there that are really powerful, but very expensive, especially in Trinidad. And you can try those uh, those video card those video cards to get the best out of your PC. In terms of storage, you will want something most likely more than 500 gigabytes in size, especially if you're going to be running multiple games. Again, an average game size is about 10 gigabytes. So if you're going to install a lot of different games and you want to make it sort of like a PlayStation, but not your PlayStation, this is a PC we're talking about here, or a laptop. You want to get at least one terabyte of hard disk space. Further to that. You may want to invest in an SSD, which is a solid state drive. Solid state hard drives are about 10 to 100 times faster than a normal hard drive. So this allows you to boot up faster. So Windows actually loads faster. And also your games actually run faster or load faster. Um, and you may want to think about that. But solid state hard drives are expensive compared to the average normal hard drive, SATA drives that you get outside there. Um, and with that being said, I hope that I gave you a little bit of an idea of what you should spend. In terms of what I've been seeing, an office PC generally goes for <coughs> $3,000 or so, uh, inclusive of a monitor, um, to $4,000, you know, in certain places. I wouldn't cross $4,000 for an office PC, um, 
that does basic work or a homework uh, laptop that does basic work. Um, if, as I say, it, you do specialized work, you do gaming, you do engineering, you do whatever video rendering, etc., then your, the price of your PC or your laptop will go up. And then I would suggest that you purchase something a little bit more, maybe at between the range of 4000 to 6000 If you really need something a lot better, up to 8000 I wouldn't really cross that. I wouldn't suggest buying a Mac for gaming either. Um, so I hope that this, this has helped at least some of you out there. Um, like it if you agree. Dislike it if you don't agree. Uh, let me hear your comments. Please subscribe to my channel. Click a little like on the button on the channel. You know, it's a good thing. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.